I never in my wildest dreams thought that things would turn out like they turned out. What he doesn't tell you is that he was the hardest working physio you've ever seen in your entire life. I love coaching. It, 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 it gives you a buzz like nothing else. Did you ever wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night, leading into that game going, what are we doing? We are absolutely objectively crazy. No, yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Where do you get the more time? You, you take it from your family because they're your bank and they give it to you because they love you. So that is actually the chat we had as a family and they just said, listen, and I, I was literally thinking, I'm going to lose them. Hello and welcome to The Good, The Bad and The Rugby brought to you by Continental Tires. Yes, this is not Alex's voice. It's a very foreign accent if you're not used to it. I know it takes a lot to get used to. Um, it's my pleasure to step in this week and be joined uh, by Bob Skinsale. It's a little reunion. The last time I saw you, the Springboks went on to beat the All Blacks in a very triumphant fashion a Twickenham and you saw it all coming well I don't know if I saw it all coming but I certainly was was confident and excited um it, it was all pre-tournament and it was um I think there was a celebration it was still warm enough for for us South Africans to feel our fingers and our toes <laughs> um so it was it was it was a good time it was certainly a good weekend and, and some interesting rugby that started to be played even then well, the boys, Painter Haskintons, uh, they're all uh, off on the holly bobs, as they say around here. It's a word I've uh, learned recently. <laughs> um, and, well, the Southern Hemisphere rights are, are in the building in a big way. And we are joined by someone in another building with heating, we hope, for his sake. Uh, the two-time Rugby World Cup winner, the brand new man in charge at Leinster. Uh, he's a bit like the Heston Blumenthal of rugby coaches, a bit like Q. He likes a, a gadget or two. Uh, he's always cooking away at some uh, interesting solutions and innovative new ways of doing things. Uh, Jock Ninovit, how's Dublin tonight? Good day, Achia. Good evening, uh, the, the, the two of you. No, uh, Dublin is, uh, is nice and chilly. <laughs> Definitely the, different than, than a 30 degree Cape Town, that I can tell you. Jock, I've got to say, I mean, you've been around the country celebrating and it looked like in a, in a very joyous fashion um have the have the irish embraced that and 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 nestled you in for a for a for a cold guinness to celebrate the end of the world cup or is that still uh, are you still breaking some new relationships there no no bob i must say the people here you know the irish they they are phenomenal people enough uh, and luckily I, we had i had this stint with Rossi in in 2016-17 you know so we're quite familiar with 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 uh, with the uh, with the culture over here now so i've i've had some some good points already uh, the, <laughs> you know that everybody is you must go to this one you must go to the, you must go to this pub that pub is a good guinea so i've had a few good guineas this year yeah <laughs> but, but since the end of October, you could honestly not have stopped yet because you've gone from the frying pan into the fire, it seems. A great big celebration tour in South Africa, a few days off, uh, straight into Dublin and the pub scene. Yeah, no, uh, no, just it's uh, it like it's been busy uh, uh, over the obviously after the World Cup and uh, um, uh, I was in a, uh, a, 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 a there was a handover uh, obviously uh, between myself and and and, and Saru um, in terms of the IP and all that stuff and and some uh, commitments with uh, with sponsors and and talks and stuff that I had to do. And uh, then, yeah, as soon as that was done, uh, I was keen to get uh, over to this side, you know, and um, uh, I, I think it's going to be a nice challenge with, with, with Leinster and uh, I, I, I know it's going to take some time for me to settle in. So um, it, it did uh, way back with Munster and when, we, when I went back to, uh, to South Africa, it took some time to, to get settled and to get into the, um, into the way of, uh, of how we want to do things and the defense and it takes time to adjust to it. So I thought uh, rather earlier than later. So now just give us an idea of how much moving has had to happen. Are the kids there? Did the pets come with? Have you moved pot plants, the, the whole caboodle, or did, was it just you in a suitcase? 
Well, initially it was just me in a suitcase. So I, I arrived here the day of the Munster game, uh, a Munster Leinster game. So I, I missed that game. I was on, on the flight. And then I started the week of connect uh, with, with the team, uh, just getting to kn- know everyone. Uh, my wife arrived uh, the Wednesday or the Thursday of that connect week and the kids the week after. So uh, they still, they were finishing up the exams and stuff like that. But the whole, the, the whole family is here. Dogs, the, the dog came first. So, so the dog is with me, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, in, in our family, the picking order is the dog, then the children, and then probably me. So, uh, uh, so, but at least I've got a friend. I've got, <laughs> I've got a friend, yeah. So, so it's not alone. One, one more than zero, which is great. Almeri obviously yeah. runs a really tight ship there. The dog's uh, travel was booked al- yeah. alongside <laughs> everyone else's. As someone who has moved pets across hemispheres, mm. I can highly uh, recommend doing it, but also finding someone else to help you with it because it is a dizzying amount of admin uh, back to the rugby speaking of dizzying amount of rugby uh, and and admin after you win a rugby world cup how does that work um you've now done it twice so you could probably write the book on it yeah so the, there's uh, obviously the game was a saturday yeah then the sunday was was almost the, the rugby awards of that evening mm. so um uh yeah a couple of beers uh, the, uh during the day, um, and and with the World Cup and the families and all that, uh, that happened on the Sunday, and uh, then the Sunday evening the rugby awards and we were f- and we flew out the next day, in different uh, groups. So um, it depends on 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 how uh, because obviously World Rugby doesn't know who's going to play in the final and and who's going to be in the last uh, um, uh, on the last flights out of uh, out of the hosting country. So. So in in Japan, the the, the team was split up uh, in probably five or six or seven different flights. Uh, but this time around, the team went with one flight, and then uh, the management went with another one. And then and then you arrive, and it's uh, it's chaos. It's uh, it's uh, our tombo full of people and phenomenal. Uh, the energy that 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 we got from the people when we arrived uh, back in South Africa, and then it's trophy tour. Uh, and sponsors and and, uh, and and you pay back basically because the World Cup actually belongs to them so you you pay it back as much as you can and it's quite busy and uh, you stand on a bus and you wave and you give energy and uh, and it's amazing to see the people uh, uh, next to the side of the road and running with a bus and even the people uh, or the families that were with, 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 with us on the bus uh, as you see the people and the excitement in the people and how emotional the people are uh, it gets to you uh, I, 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 it, a lot of the family members that were on the bus started crying because you you, you can't you can't explain it but it's it's this unbelievably humbling experience and and it's very emotional actually why do you think that is why was there such an outpouring of energy and emotion aimed at the spring box especially this time around i don't know i um i think i think in 20 in 2019 i think people uh, there was hope that that we would have been successful but i think this time around there was a lot of expectation uh, especially on the players there was a lot of, i mean you've won it last time and uh, you, you only lost two players you only lost beast and francholo that that that, that uh, and the skull uh, brits that that actually didn't continue playing rugby, so the whole team that won it in twenty nineteen was available again. So I thought I think there was a lot of expectations on the on the players and from the from from the from the fans. And then obviously I think the the one point wins in the quarter semis and final didn't do. <laughs> it created uh, there was a lot of tension and uh, um, uh, if I can put it like that, I think there was a lot of tension and emotion in, in the fans. Uh, um, and then obviously, the, and the, with expectations, and and I think the, yeah, with, when the team delivered, I think the the people was just crazy. They they were absolutely crazy. The fans certainly was amazing. I mean, my 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 family, Jacques, as you as you know, you know, we all come from passionate rugby households. You know, and I, I, I from from Omar. My, my mum to my wife to to my little uh, son, and I was just commentating, and I was kept coming back fr- to the UK on a, on a Eurostar early on a Monday morning, and they'd still be emotional and cross with me because we'd we'd made them so emotional <laughs> for the for yeah. the day. You know, I can imagine it's times ten thousand for you, but it certainly was a, 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 
one of the one of the things that carried it for for the length of the tournament. You're right, was was how close and 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 yeah. how emotionally charged those games were. Which one was the worst for you? Because I definitely think the English one was the worst for me as mm. as a fan. That that game was torture. I mean, they, all three yeah. of them were a lot, but that one was uh, Bob. Which one was your was yeah, the toughest I'm just, one? I'm just thinking through that now and, and and recalling all three. I mean, I think the the England game definitely uh, we were a commentary panel and we we close friends and we are competitive and that kind of thing. But definitely in that environment was was incredibly um, emotionally charged as well. I found the French v- uh, um, one point when really exciting really fun, really like there was invigorating speed and and really uh, exhilarating. And most people who watched that went, geez, what a game that was. But the England one felt uh, like a lot of really hard work watching on. The final, I feel like I anticipated it almost. Uh, maybe we were just, we'd gone through two weeks of that and we, we'd kind of been preparing, <laughs> preparing ourselves for more of the same. Um, but I'm always fascinated by how you guys reflect on it once you've had a few weeks to get over the intense stress and probably the exhaustion of it all. No, definitely, Alma, definitely the, the 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 England game. Yes, that semi final. I I'll tell you. I, I think uh, we we so the French game was a it it, it was a beautiful evening. So it it it, it um it, the stage was 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 laid to to have a crack at each other in, with mm. ball in hand. So they scored three tries. We scored four tries. Seven tries uh, 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 was scored in 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 that quarter final so uh, and so the game was set up for for a thriller and i think even the quarter final against uh island new zealand was also a thriller mm. but then the for the semi final we actually in the week when we when we looked at the weather the weather it showed that there was rain coming but it was only going to 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 hit us probably in the last 10 or 15 minutes of the game that's what we um, thoughts going to happen on on the Monday when we start preparing for that um, for 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 that semi final. But then yes, the rain came through a lot quicker. So uh, um, we actually we actually wanted to play a more expansive game against England, if I can say it like that. Um, if you think what we did in twenty twenty two, when we when we played them at Twickenham, so Kurt uh, Lawrence's try. So there was a lot more. We used the ball a, l- a lot more. But then with the rain, uh, we had to we had to change our strategy and our plans obviously or in the game mm. uh, and uh, but you that's did, why Jacques, you did even you even started like that because you, you had yeah. those long wide passes yeah. in the first three four minutes and then suddenly you'd done that yeah. twice and the rain came down and it was just like so you almost yeah. had to shut up shop yeah, yeah. and that's why that that that, that was a, a stressful thing because it, it we, we felt that we struggled even in the 2019 final we struggled to get our malls going against England um, so we had to revert back to that. Um, so yeah, so things in that game, uh, we we had to find solutions on the run, uh, and that's why that was such a stressful game for 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 us, for me personally. I mean, if you think about it, we we had to make a substitution with Marnie early on. Uh, you know, it was raining. It wasn't uh, probably I won't say it didn't doesn't suit him and he can't play in the rain. But but Andre playing his rugby and applying mm. his trade in the north, he's a lot more used to the to the circumstances so that was a quite emotional and a big call that we had to make early on uh, in the game uh, um, which is not always nice uh, you but you have to put the, the team first and and so yeah that that was uh, that was by far the most stressful one the the, the a final is always going to be I mean uh, even in the 2019 final you, if you look at the end score it, it looks big you know but but half time uh, we were in, we we went in it was 12 6 at one stage i think it was 18 12 and and uh, uh, and and then we scored a try so we actually only uh, got control i would say in the 2019 game we only got control probably uh, from minute 65 onwards uh, when 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 uh, um my um, pimp scored. That, that's yeah. when we we got a little bit of control and breathing space, and and then obviously England. The time was running out. They had to they had to chase the game, which gave us another opportunity to score. But luckily, it worked out at the end of the day. Yeah, and, that, and now we can smile about it. But it was it was yeah. nothing to smile about in the moment. Um, no. I want to go back to that decision about sending on Andre and Marnie, but also there were so many other really big moments at this tournament. Um, your biggest intervention, the biggest decision that now in hindsight you can look back on and go, I'm glad I took this decision. And 
I, we'd obviously like a look behind the scenes. So I don't know how many of those decisions uh, were 50% Rasi and 50% Jock either. But we'd love to hear your personal take on a moment where you you went, this is what we're going to do now. And it, it either worked or it helped set things in motion. Yeah, I think in, ter uh, in terms of uh, decisions made, I, 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 we, we always like... Uh, we we are very transparent uh, coaching group, so we 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 get everybody's input, and and that's why I think it was in the England game where where we all huddled uh, uh, around. Um, uh, Rassi was sitting on the edge, so we got uh, so myself and Rassi is in communication with each other, and then um, uh, next to me is Felix who, who ran the attack, and then we've got uh, Don and and Dion and and them sitting in the front, so we we had to make changes because we were we, we, we couldn't get our foothold in that game so everybody in and because now are we going to bring Quacha on okay but uh, will the lineouts function so Dion had to give input in that will the scrums function so that, that I, I would say the the decision making is always a collective uh, uh, in terms uh, of, of, of uh, 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 let's say we bring Andre on uh, 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 Stocker will you be happy with the, with the, with the kicking game uh, will, how will that affect you and uh, so the, uh, that was so the decision making I would say is a group when I speak to people about you and Rasi one of the first things that people always ask is when did they start working together um, where did this come from? Because for the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, it feels like this revolution in South African rugby happened overnight. At one point, we were losing to Italy, and the next thing, these two guys are on the scene, and here they are just absolutely cruising, and the plane's taking off. But obviously, n no success happens overnight, and no partnership like this was forged in the last two years. Um, and then when I say, I heard a story that the two of you met back in 1991 on a military base in Bloemfontein, uh, which is the least fancy place I can probably imagine in the entire world, uh, because I lived next door to that military base when I was a child. Um, it's such a long journey that you have been on. And whereas Rassi as a former Springbok uh, and a player who's represented his country at the highest level could probably have foreseen some sort of version of this future in his wildest dreams. Take me back to whether the Jock Ninaber in 1991 would have ever foreseen this journey and this road and these high moments in his life. No, never. Yes, in 1991. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we met. We met in the army. So we, uh, yeah, we both were in the um, uh, school of armor uh, uh, together. So I was in one. We went in the same battalion, but I, I was in uh, one special services battalion, and Rassi was in the uh, school of armor. But uh, we had a mutual friend. So he, so a, a guy that was friends with me. Uh, uh, at school, he was Rassi's roommate, so that's how I met Rassi uh, uh, the first time, was in the army and then obviously I, I, I went uh, uh, Rassi stayed a little bit on in the army, I, I went back uh, I went and studied, became a physio and then when Rassi started playing for the Shimlas I was a Shimlas' physio, so that's uh, where, we, where we actually joined up again, he as a player and, and myself as a physio and then uh, obviously started working together from a coaching perspective, was in 2005 when Rassi took over uh, head coach uh, of the Cheetahs uh, from Piet Kleinert. I, I was the uh, SNC, uh, I was a physio then and, and transitioning into strength and conditioning um, uh, because, uh, yeah, it, uh, because he, he kind of, we, we uh, Derry Kutsio was the strength and conditioning coach at the at the Cheetahs back then. He he then uh, joined Jake White with a with a uh, with a Springbok. So mm. there was like this void there, and we we couldn't. Uh, Rassi felt that we, he couldn't get the right guy, so he asked me if I would go over to that side of of, of things. So I, I I did a little bit of study in that. And then I went in the SNC. So that's where we started working together. So, so uh, from a from a from a management point of view, from two thousand and five. So it's, uh, we almost thirty years know each other for thirty years uh, and uh, working together uh, on 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 a management level from two thousand and five. And obviously my roles have changed. I was first a physio, then SNC, and then assistant coach, and 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 then head coach. But now I never foreseen this. I, I well in my mind just being a physio with a sports team was my wildest dream uh, if I can put it like that and and and, and just to be with a physio for the che for the cheetahs would have been 
good for me, you know. So, so I never in my wildest dreams thought that I've uh, that I've that things would turn out like they turned out. Um, so yeah, I had an unbelievable, uh, un- unbelievable ride uh, thus far. Uh, I, hope, I hope I can get another couple of years of that. There will, there certainly will be lots more. Um, Jock, so, so I'm not going to let you get away with only that because what he doesn't tell you is that he was the hardest working physio you've ever seen in your entire life because I was a guy who rugby was interesting but not all absorbing for me so I would go and sit with the physios when Jock was the, the head physio at the Cats and listen because up until 12 o'clock midnight, he'd be literally looking after players. I remember Marco <laughs> Wenzel came there and chatted the, the backs out of everybody. He could, he could talk more than anyone else and then you used to roll your eyes. But still, because you were working on the other players, we'd be talking. And, and I think that, that ingrained love of the game and the players, etc. That year, Russi, did he hurt his Achilles, Jock? I think he hurt his Achilles or calf foot. or something like that. Yeah. Oh, it was his foot. Uh, That's right. It, it was, it was something that, that, that stopped him playing. That stopped him playing. playing. Yeah, yeah, it's his yeah. foot. It was literally, it was um, the, the, the last season. And he started with the Cats and tried and went through the preseason yeah. and, then, and then wasn't able to make it. And then he got the, the, the job to go across to um, the Cheetahs at that stage and sort of almost transitioned straight away. And it didn't take him long to have signaling, uh, signaling <laughs> on the roof. Um, <laughs> and that's come a long way as well. But, I mean, what an amazing yeah. ode to, to the relationship between them, you know? Yeah, those, the, the lights on the roof uh, that, that everyone who knew no, those, and those, watched. Those were the aeroplane signal battens and now it's moved to the, the, to the lights. I love that. I love that. Yeah. But So the, the fact that you went to the military is a really interesting one for me because you were a pretty promising athlete at school, played a bit of rugby, went to Grey College, which is a Springbok factory, didn't become yeah. a Springbok or play high-level rugby yourself. You could have had... And I was explaining this to our producer, Tom Edwards. In the South African context, if you're a physiotherapist, you could have a very comfortable, very quiet, but very well set up life. And you could dabble with, you know, being the cheetah's physiotherapist here and there if, if rugby really gave you a thrill. But there is a version of your life that could have gone very quietly and under the radar and you could have had all the bottles of red wine that you would have loved in your life. <laughs> and no one would have ever stopped you on the street or tell your kids what they thought of how you do your job or invade your privacy in the way that South Africans do because now we own you. This is a, <laughs> this is a very prominent position to be in. And it must have been a journey that in, in the beginning you were probably not completely sure of. Was there a point at any point where you, thought, where you looked at this and went... It's actually asking quite a bit for me. I, there is this whole other parallel existence I could have that could have been nice and quiet. When I started going into the coaching side of things, I so I did the 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 the, um, the physio side and the S and C side. I really enjoyed that. I I really enjoyed working with the players mm-hmm. and working with the players on the field. I really enjoy that. I love coaching. It it it, it gives you. A buzz like nothing else, and uh, um, uh, uh, so and when I became when when Rossi actually suggested that I go over and, and started maybe defense coach, uh, I mean the transition sounds now crazy. I mean how do you go from physiotherapy to uh, defense coach? But way back in the, uh, those days, there wasn't defense coaches. I'm talking now 2004 2005. True. It there was defense coaches in league. Yeah, Bob, and that, that they they started moving into rugby, but uh, um, uh, they, it, so we, so the transition was easy. I could say anything to the players because they didn't have a backdrop of a defense coach at school yeah. that no uh, that that would challenge you. They were they were just doing well. so. There was this blank canvas. So that's how I got into the coaching. Yes, but I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the tactical part of things. I lo- I love the the chess game in it. And um, uh, and so so uh, yeah, uh, 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 you were asking in a in a in a uh, from a uh, from from a parallel point of view, or would I I I didn't envision that it would become mm-hmm. like the, like like this. And I and I must say that the assistant coach part was what is is awesome because you you uh, the, the head coach part was some something that I had to get used to, and you would know. I mean, we we spoke about it uh, when 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 I when the British and Irish line series, it it, it was something for me to get used to, uh, um, especially the media and all that. I I, I loved being private and on uh, to do to work and to to work with the players and be there in the cold face of winning or losing a game but but you you you're not in the public uh, so but 
and I guess you get used to that. I, I got, I, got I, I won't say I'm good at it, but I got, I got more used to it uh, um, at, uh, at the end. But I, 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 I um, you, your question is, do I sometimes think I could have had it uh, and a lot more safer? Uh, I wouldn't want it different, uh, Elmer. I, I, yes, I enjoy a challenge. I really, really enjoy a challenge. And that's why I think probably uh, physio was awesome. But then when the challenge came, listen, you can, uh, what about strength and conditioning? I, I like to, 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 to challenge myself with something new, you know, um, and then the, the, the defense stuff. Uh, do, uh, Jock, are you keen to, to, to try and uh, go into a defense coaching role? Yes, I'll, I will grab it with, with both hands. So I think that's just my personality. I like, I like, I like the challenge uh, uh, and to see if you can, you can not master it, but if you can, uh, yeah, I like the challenge. I like the not getting used to and settled in. <laughs> Um, Jacques, there was a so to segue on to something else we want to talk about. But you mentioned the the league coaches coming across, and I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head. Um, uh, obviously, um, Andy Farrell, uh, in terms of a guy who played league, he also played union. Yeah. But understanding the league coaching, Les Kiss is another one. David Nisifora, yeah. um, and we've seen them have fantastic roles around uh, rugby union. Um, coaches have moved around. Now there's a big question. Are players going to be more allowed to move around? You are seeing probably now for the first time at the coalface, you are see rugby at the provincial level because you've, you know, for the last eight years or seven years, you've been one level above that. South African players being allowed to move around, do you think that's going to be healthier for, for our, our game? And is, is there a way we can manage it that benefits everybody? I think for South Africa, uh, and I, I'm not sure, I can't talk for other unions and other countries, but for us, I, I just think um, uh, to allow our players to play abroad and then still select them, uh, is that what you mean? Still select that them sort of for thing the I'm box. saying, is it, yeah. is, it, is, it, is, it, uh, is it something that you believe that should be good for them to still be selected for Springboks? Yeah. I, th I think so, Bob, because I, I don't think we have the currency to pay up. But the, we have uh, the monetary strength mm. to, to pay our players. Uh, the value that they, the, that they are valued at, you yeah. know, so for, from a monetary point of view. Uh, and, and I think if you look at, um, if you look at the, 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 the squad that we took, I think half, it's half, half. Uh, about 16, let's say 15 or 16 of the players are playing, applying their uh, trade abroad and 15, 16 apply their tra trade in South Africa. And, and, and th th those guys that play abroad, I, I, I don't know what their salary bill is, but I mean, if they were in South Africa, there's no way we would have been yeah. able to, to pay them. And, 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 but I, I do think it's good for us that they go abroad, they play there, and, uh, uh, and, and then you can still select them if they're good enough and if they're relevant enough. Enough, you can still select them for for South Africa. I, I think that, that 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 really helped us win two World Cups. Is is the, uh, and it's it works for us because yeah. if you think about it, if you just think at locks, so we had RG uh, uh, the the locks that 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 played in the uh, in the in the World Cup. So Eben is with the Sharks, but he was also abroad in 2019. Then you have uh, uh, Franco Moster who's abroad. Uh, um, you have Ergie who was abroad. You, uh, John Klein is who's abroad um, and Marvin Ori was, was at home uh, mm. or he played with the Stormers so but if, if all of them stayed in South Africa I think they wouldn't have been the Norkias and the, the young guys coming yes, through now point, because yeah. they were yeah. they would have been blocked by them. So then moving on, you can now you get you, the, in the URC you get the new guys that, that that are playing in the URC. So you actually where you maybe would have had a, a, let's say uh, two or three per union uh, and and you have the four URC teams. Uh, um, you you would have had only only half of the amount of locks that are currently that you can select on. From, just yeah, because yeah, guys yeah. are yeah yeah so it, it, it broadens your 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 guys exposure uh to to top uh to top rugby uh, um uh so, well, yeah so i, I think mean, it's a good thing for us in anything that that you do or that south africa uh, does gets judged as an unfair advantage from the outside in but from the inside out i have to say as a south african you know with currency measures and all those kind of things it's amazing to be able to see so many young mm players come through either their local provinces yeah. or be able to apply their trade internationally. And we've even had a couple of players who have made peace with the fact that, you know, four years in a foreign country 
and they're probably not going to get a chance to go back and they can't upstage another player in their position, but they're good enough to play rugby internationally and they, they make a different pathway for themselves and that's a positive. It's got to be a positive. I think that if I can, in my professional career, go and ply my trade, as I've done, in a different geological location because there is a different opportunity there that will challenge and grow and encourage me to test myself and that's socially acceptable. I feel like as a professional athlete you should be given every opportunity to go test, learn, develop, experience and also just grow as a person because there's so much of that growth that happens when you're taken outside of your safe little space um, in other environments, learning other languages but also just experiencing other cultures firsthand. And this is a really contentious issue but from a coaching perspective, what makes it harder when half your crop applying their trade overseas. Is there, it's more of a headache getting them released, getting them available, getting them free at all of the right times. But are there other complications here that we're being naive to? No, definitely. Uh, the challenge is alignment because mm. it's easy you, you, to, to, uh, to keep them aligned with the Springbok way because obviously now they play in Japan and the Japan League, there's not a big kicking game there. Uh, and so the, the, they've got different skill sets that get developed in different competitions, uh, but to still then keep them aligned with the way we're going to, our DNA, the way we're going to do it in South Africa, that, that, that's a tough part. That's why we had a lot of alignment camps. Uh, so we, we would have uh, online alignment camps uh, uh, with players uh, regularly uh, just to, to keep them aligned with, remember, uh, Faf, you're playing in Japan. I know it's a ball, uh, it's a more ball in hand approach, but you must still continue to tra you, uh, to practice your box kicks because, remember, in our system, we're probably going to look at attacking teams aerially as well. So the, the, the alignment is the first part. And then I would say the second part is the player management. Uh, because it's um, that, and and we find it tough now with our with our your C players as well, where you play your competition in the northern hemisphere, but you, uh, your your club competition, but you you your 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 test matches or your um, uh, is still in the southern hemisphere yes. uh, calendar. So so that makes it tough. We 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 can what we can do is we can we can manage uh, the players in South Africa. We can manage their load and like we did, uh, we took them out of rugby in the Six Nations. Uh, 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 for a reconditioning block because otherwise they would have just played and played and played mm. and that is the bad thing with the players who play abroad uh, they, don't, they don't get managed they, they just play and play and play and I think that's why a lot of players are currently going to the Japan uh, because the Japan season is a lot more aligned with the South African uh, international season. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot more f uh, flexibility there. Uh, and, uh, but, but definitely uh, France and uh, the challenges of France and, uh, and, and the UK or the Premiership, that's the big challenge and, and, and managing the players and the players' loads. Uh, but I must say, it, it, um, that's why uh, I did a lot of visits at the clubs um, uh, uh, with Andy Edwards, who's our, the head of our athletic performance, and and with Felix, so that's why Felix Jones were based in uh, uh, in yeah in Dublin. He serviced the players that were playing here in the uh, uh, in Europe in the Northern Hemisphere. I can't comment on other countries and other uh, 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 unions how they manage that, but definitely for us, with our currency and with the amount of youngsters that gets produced and and, and gets spit out into the system, mm. I think it's good for us not to block them it's good for so if 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 uh, clubs or the clubs abroad wants to use some of our players uh, it opens up a hole for for that for that uh, I always want to say that factory machine that produces these youngsters so they can get exposure on, uh, uh, nice and early in their careers in terms of the management though when you do make big decisions like you the one you mentioned uh, pulling Mani and sending Handre on in a crucial point Managing that fallout within a team um, in such a tense week, in, in such a tense build-up in a, in a Rugby World Cup knockout phase, the culture needs to be so incredibly strong to sustain big decisions like that because we've all got friends at work mm. that we get along with really well. And then when your friend gets hauled over the coals or doesn't get the opportunity that you think they deserve, then your lips also a bit long and you're a little like itchy for them as well. 
talk to me about that culture that you guys have managed to build. And you built a really good culture in a very short amount of time between that loss to Italy. What was that? 2016, 2017. The turnaround to 2019, I saw it firsthand because I was often embedded reporting on the Springboks. Um, I was there. I remember the day when you guys announced Sia as captain. And I could genuinely see the needle move there, you know, the energy, the warmth, uh, the positivity with which people came to every engagement and every training session. How, what is the secret to fostering that? And I'm sure there isn't just one thing, but if there is one thing that now that you're in a new environment that you need to bed in again from scratch, because this time around, it's, it's you bringing the Jock Ninober way of doing things to Leinster. Talk to me about what the ways are in which you embed culture first and foremost. Yes, uh, Alma, I think the, the, the most important thing is to get the right people, uh, not necessarily the best. Because, and, and that's sometimes where we do, when we do select the squad, um, the, the, sometimes we don't select, there's, better, there's probably, I would say, better players that are better than the ones we select in our squad that are performing better they, they but but the key thing is they not they must be the right people for the environment for the way we do things uh, and uh, that's why sometimes we get criticized selecting a squad and yes but this guy is on form and he's he's by far better than that guy and you know what the public are knowledgeable in south africa they are completely right but sometimes that guy's not the right guy and i think that uh, even if you think about what happened uh, so if at the quarter final uh, uh, Marnie and uh, and uh, and Kubus Reinach was the they started you know and and we beat France in France uh, at home uh, which was a massive it was a massive with that and then they the, the two of them again played in the in, in the semi final you know and and, and Kubus and then for the final uh, just because uh, of our analysis and 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 uh, um, what we, we the the team that we went with a seven one split, which then obviously somebody is going to fall out, and uh, um, then selecting far for the final. It's not that Kubis wasn't uh, wasn't good enough to 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 play in the final and and win a final for us, uh, but we just felt as a as a management that that far is the right guy for that specific game, just like Kubis was the right guy for the French game. And and Kubis was the right guy for the for the game against uh, uh, England. Uh, we felt Fof was the right guy. It doesn't mean that Kubis were better than Fof or Fof mm. is better than Kubis. It is who's the right personnel for that specific game. And to do that, um, the players must trust you. And 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 that, for that you must have the right players. Uh, they um, and I must say that's the nice thing. We we we, we the, the players. I felt the players trusted us and 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 the decisions you made, and and we also trusted them. You know. So um, and and I think that, that that's the key thing. Uh, you must have the right people. They they not necessarily the best, but they're the right. They're, they're the right uh, people. So I would say that's the that's the most important part in. Uh, in terms of the culture, uh, if you have the right people there, I mean everybody go like you say. Everybody, it's not nice. I mean, I, I it, it is horrible uh, uh, for Kubis uh, um, uh, not playing in the World Cup final. You know, because he he played in the other two and he was good enough to play in the World Cup final. But we just felt Fof was the right decision for that specific game. And then even uh, like we 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 are family friendly in our environment. So we had I think we had sixty five. Women and uh, or partners and kids uh, uh, in 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 the last two weeks of the final uh, um, uh, that stayed in the hotel with us. So it was it was like a it was chaos. like a crash. It was <laughs> it was chaos. It was brilliant. I, I I loved it, and and even you know sometimes when when let's say Manay who's Fof's uh, partner uh, when when Kubis gets selected, Manay can be sometimes you can find that the partners can can uh, can become grumpy and. Uh, uh, yeah, but why is my husband not? No. And, and there was nothing of that. The partners were incredible. You know, they there was never there was never a bitching between them, and and they just pick up the pieces. So when we don't select Fof for to for a game, or we don't select Kubis, then they, then their partners just pick up the pieces, glue them back together again, and so. Um, you, I know we have that hashtag of stronger together, but I really felt in this World Cup, from 
the kids, the partners. I mean, how many pictures, how many times have you seen uh, Vinny carrying around Bongi's kids and Bongi mm. carrying around Vinny's kids, you know? So uh, everybody was invested in everybody. Uh, it was this massive big family. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, 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 we had the right people, uh, and uh, the players were, were uh, the players and their partners were the right people uh, um, for the squad. Jacques, I think I think, and and that's part of the kudos. I mean, I haven't had a chance to say it to you personally, but that uh, it's a fantastic um, display of empathetic leadership from from you guys and and a buy-in from from all the teams. And uh, actually, great to see that from a from a national team with with leaders of men and leaders of families and leaders of countries, um, sports teams actually displaying you know that kind of interaction. Um, and it was something that really stood out. You know, you could see it. I had a slightly more trained eye. I, I was delighted with that, and I think it, it, it gave an incredible message. I had a slightly more trained eye on the decisions on the field because you made some big decisions around players of unbelievable international caliber at, at crucial times of a match where even as a commentator, I'm looking around the stadium and people going, oh, why is he taking that guy off? Or why? And I, I know some of the backstory, but I'd love to hear just from you you know, culturally, in terms of the team, I didn't see one rolling eye. I didn't see yeah. one shaking head. I didn't see one uh, uh, um, hang jaw, hang, hang lip type, type um, environment, or sorry, a type display. You know, and people forget how quickly, because we, we get accustomed here, I watch, I watch uh, premiership football and, and international football, and it's amazing, but you get a guy completely avoiding his coach, walking off, kicking a water bottle, shaking his head or whatever. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm sure you'd be delighted if even Etzebeth avoided you if, if you had, to, <laughs> if you had to, <laughs> to shepherds hook him off the field. But, but culturally, it felt for me that, that almost any decision made in those 85-odd minutes or crucial 85-odd minutes would just be listened to with no um, argument because that was pre-agreed. Is, is that the environment you were, you were trying to get for the performance zone? Yeah, we, we, we would. Uh, so our, our team selections and, and team discussions were always done open so, so everybody could hear. So when we, when we select or announce a team, uh, we would announce a team and we would say, listen, uh, uh, this is the reasons why we se selected the team like this. And, and op uh, there wasn't any one-on-ones, no one-on-ones. So it was done if the player wanted a one-on-one -on -one and, and a discussion afterwards, we were open to that. But it was never before team selection. We had one-on-ones with players and we, 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 the team got announced uh, 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 on Monday morning. That's the first thing we do normally or, or day one. Uh, we would announce the squad, but it was announced in front of everyone. So, uh, and we would explain our, our thought process and, and, and we would say, we, we, we are not sure here. We, 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 we went with this and this is our gut feel, but we, we, we discussed this option and this option and this option. So I think we were open and honest uh, from the start when, when it came to team selection. And, and then obviously that feeds into uh, the Saturday, the match, uh, that, that uh, the players knew that, uh, we we uh, and I think we were lucky, uh, Bob, that there wasn't there's not a big there wasn't a big gap between the players. So if a player was on the bench, it wasn't necessarily that he he's second best. You know, it, no, it, no, no, of it, course, exactly, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that makes that 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 make, makes it easy. Which is hard to explain. I've 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 got to say I'm I'm lucky enough to have played the game not to the level of 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 what these guys are playing. In, in the modern day, but you can get it after a while. You can see what you guys are doing. You know, you might start with a guy who only does 15 or 18 or 23 hard minutes of something because actually there's a bigger plan. You know, whereas yeah. every, the public gets used to, you know, we do our 60 minutes and then the reserves come on or if there's an injury, then they come on. And, and the beauty for me was your guys' display of, of attitude and aptitude. It was uh, an ability to put the right guys in the right positions. And, and to do that, you've got to move those pieces around the chess table without them getting cross with you and, and having a display yeah. that affects the culture in the team. So I've, I found yeah. that was extraordinary. Well done on, on that front. I think um, Alma's is, is going to be cross with me, but I, I want to do two or three quick questions. We, we, you, you're allowed to think, but you're not allowed to go with like a, um, a long um, answer because I don't want to get you in trouble. Whose idea was Damien Willems' scrum decision? Oh, please, come on. Give us that. <laughs> <laughs> 
France, a quick one. It was, uh, I would say, Rassi. Okay. One word answer. Okay. And then the decisions about, about you know, moving players around, etc. How many times did you either have to convince Rassi of your idea or did he have to convince you of his idea? Or is that a thing born in the management team? Uh, probably born in the management team, but I would say um, we, uh, yeah, so like the 7-1 split um, uh, in the final, uh, probably start, uh, myself and Rossi had a conversation and we, we, we were keen for 7-1, then we presented to the management and then from the management it went to, some of them were 5-3 and, and, and keep it the same as what it, we did in the quarters and the semis and uh, then uh, Rassi was at one stage at a 6-2 again and then I was in a 7-1 again so <laughs> it's like that that's the, the, the that's the comments and, and we but the one thing I can say and and, and uh, uh, is that when, when we when we decide as a management okay listen we're going to go this route we're going to go with a 7-1 in the yeah. World Cup final and uh, we're not going to have a scrum off on the bench and Cheslin will cover scrum off and so, some guys will be opposed to that, some guys won't. And then we, we will explain, show clips and discuss. And it's a, it's a long process. It, it's a long process. But once once we decide that's the route we're going to go, then everybody's all in. Uh, there is not one finger pointing. There is not, I told you so afterwards if the plan mm. didn't work. Once we made a decision, then, then we go with it. But did you ever wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night leading into that game going what are we doing we are absolutely objectively crazy no yes yeah definitely i mean you <laughs> you you think that, that i think the public will crucify you you know especially if you lose five early on and and that's what you think you know remember the team selection is for south africa it's never for us it's never and that's how we explain it to the players as well remember we are selecting a team that's re representing south africa 62 million people and and i promise you 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 wake up at night with sweating thinking, yes, if we lose Faf early on, I think in the Mombella game, Faf got a head knock and concussed uh, after, and Jaden then had to play the rest of the game. So uh, uh, um, uh, you you think, yes, what if that happens? And and now Cheslin has to go and play at scrum, but which which we we use him at training there a lot. So it, mm. it's not, a, uh, for, for, the, for the fan, it looks maybe, yes, what are you doing? But he's been training there like for... 12 weeks, 16 weeks. He's yeah. been training there. Every now and then, he gets a couple of reps at, at, at scrum off, you know. Uh, so it is not, uh, for us, it's not a, well, it wasn't a weird idea. But but you still think, listen, that, that might, if you lose the game, people will always say, listen, it's because you you were too clever. You, you didn't have a <laughs> yeah, special scrum off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Jock, I, I had a, an extraordinary um, thing happen to me. So I was I was doing some work in America, in Dallas, actually. And it was the week before the Texas Rangers won the World Series. And they, they'd, they'd never won it. Um, and I listened to these baseball guys talking about coaching in the background. And the one guy was, was a statistician who'd, who'd converted and he was a coach. And he was the most vociferous. He said, it's not about the stats, it's about the battle. And and but 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 he, but obviously from a background of stats, yeah. you know. So he's like, I, you know, I, I live in the yeah. world of stats, so it's not. A, and then they had, I've, I've got it on here, and and they they gave away these 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 arm bands, where battle is written on wow. on the players, and they were like, you could you could walk into the 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 World Series final, World Cup final, doesn't matter, with all the best stats in the whole world, but it's how you battle to make those stats. <laughs> happen and then i got back and we were preparing for the world cup and you guys came out and actually put that moniker the name battle stats around the individual oh, players yeah. or whatever and i put battle and stats together i was the happiest guy in the whole world because i'd seen it <laughs> i said that that was a premonition for me you know and so wore it all the way through to the world uh, cup well final. so bob actually won you the world <laughs> cup just so you know the opposite yeah. the opposite <laughs> the opposite the opposite but to, talk to us about <laughs> that battle stats because there was a clip that came out and i don't know if it's only in the south african algorithm that this thing floated around where nick mallet speaks about you guys coming in to speak to the south african rugby commentators at some point mm. and explaining how you measure battle stats and that kwaha smith was the guy who led on battle stats at that stage far and wide, uh, and, and he had these insane numbers. For people who have no recollection of what I'm talking about here, could you break it down quickly? Yeah, so so the, the whole concept is probably um, 
we, we always say that, listen, you, you, we, we much rather select, it comes down to team selection. So it's actually in our team selection protocol, we talk about battles. Uh, and and we, we say that we will much rather select a player that get himself into 100 battles and he only wins 80% of them. So let's say, he, he so he loses 20% of those battles. But so they will, in 80 battles, he will have an influence in the game. We, uh, we would much rather select a guy like that than a guy who wins 100% of his battles, but he only gets himself in 40 battles. So, so, uh, so it actually works. So basically it comes down to work rate. We want to, we will, we will much rather select a guy with a higher work rate than a guy that's more effective in his work because we believe that we can get a guy uh, through coaching we can get him to be more effective so uh, so we had two we had battles and we had road, uh, roadmaps roadmaps is actually how effective you are in your battles so um, yeah so that the bat- battle battle uh, and so we actually just measure how much time you get yourself in a battle per minute of, of game time so uh, how quickly can you get yourself in a battle so Kwaka was part, he was he was uh, when we when we spoke to the 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 to, to Nick and, and, and Joel and the, the pundits in South Africa, just to give them a little bit of a backdrop of, of, of how, we, how, we, how we do team selection, what is our team selection policy. Uh, but, uh, we, we, we explain battles, battle, battles uh, right to them, yeah. And then, Jock, I think one of the, one of the things that's been happening as well is, is off the back of that is understanding the, the pure performances, individual performances, which also affected the tournament and and for me a standout was was peter steff you know with the number of tackles he made i mean he had carries and line out wins etc but in the world cup final you know in an 80 minute game you guys had 38 minutes 38 and a half minutes of ball in play during that time he was able to make 29 tackles i think four of them were turnover 12 of them were effective or something like that but you talk about yeah. in the game and winning battle the Malmesbury missile came came good for south africa <laughs> on in those 80 <laughs> minutes no he was phenomenal in the final but i must say a bit of steph uh, um uh yeah he, he in, in the in the world cup he just grew and grew and grew i mean we all know i mean he was world player of the year in 2019 mm. Uh, so he, he's phenomenal rugby player, but he just grew and grew and grew in the in the World Cup, and he became better and better and better. Him and 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 Franco Moster, those two two guys, they they can run for days, yeah. for days, for days, Unbelievable for days. Athletes. So 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 I think yeah, even uh, um, Franco in the in in the last three games in the in the, in the knockouts, I, d- I don't think he missed a sta- he missed a tackle. Wow. Uh, um, uh, he was phenomenal defensively uh, and, and Peter Steph so the two of them and not that the other guys are not but their main thing is they just cover holes if you, and if you look at what Peter Steph did in that uh, in the final I mean how many times he's been on the first receiver uh, uh, of New Zealand uh, putting him under pressure I mean he, he's phenomenal at that yeah just runs towards suffering the whole time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there something that you are proudest of? I, I'm guessing having two Rugby World Cup winners medals, you know, like, I, I don't even know where, where are you hanging those in your new Leinster house? Are they close to the front door somewhere? Or do He's you just keep them in, decorators in a drawer? To arrive. Yeah. <laughs> no, no they are the, the, those medals are actually, they they in my home, home in, in, in uh, Cape Town. You left they, them in South not, Africa? Yeah, I left them in South Africa. They broke no, into SA medal, Rugby medals, the other day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Medals come and go. It's the memories that last. And that's probably the big thing. I would say that, that the most enjoyable thing for me, Alma, is probably the, the memories you make. And I know it's a cliche thing, but the memories you make with players. I remember myself and Bob having a beer in Auckland at the pub. I think you phoned me and said, listen, you're keen on a beer. I remember that. I can't remember the games. I can't remember uh, what the scores were. I, can't, I don't remember that. But I remember the uh, the the. the, the the special little things that you that you the, the bonds you 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 make you make with the players and i think for me this 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 group of players that that now went to this world cup uh, a lot of them like sia i started coaching when he was 19 he was in the western province academy uh rg i started coaching at sa schools i was fortunate enough to to be involved sa schools uh sa under 20 andre uh, andre estreisen jesse uh, uh um, thomas the toy uh the, the priya brothers they they were both in the 20 
14, a junior springbok group. So, and you know what? The, 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 the best thing about these players, you know, Sia hasn't changed. He never became the title. So Sia is Sia Kulisi, and then you get Sia, the springbok rugby player, and the, and the World Cup winning captain. Sia never became Sia the Springbok World Cup winning captain. He always stayed Sia. Mm. Just, uh, so I think that's probably for me the, the nicest thing of, of, of uh, you ask what's, what's the best, what's the thing that I will always remember and cherish the most, is that the players never became the titles. They always just stayed the, the guy that I knew, Dwayne from Milan. I've been working with Dwayne since 2006, 17 years. We've been working together, either me just being his physio or coaching him or being his defense coach or and, and, and in management. And Dwayne just stayed Dwayne, you know. He he's the he was he stayed the the guy that came from the Pumas to uh to to, to the Cheetahs, you know. He always stayed that guy. So so the nice thing I saw them when they were young. They were yukarach, they were naughty, they weren't married, and then I saw them becoming, they, they, they married and they became fathers and wives, uh, uh, fathers to, uh, to wives and uh, 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 husbands to wives and fathers to kids. So to, saw, to see the growth of, of, of the players is probably the thing that's, that, that, that will sit in my head when I'm old and grey and, 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 and shaking there in front of the fire. That, I'll remember that. Well, at least, at least whatever highlights are flickering on the screen, you will have been part of. So there's, yeah. a, there's a fantastic story in there for you as well, Jacques. Well done. Uh, you have so much to be proud of. Now, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Here's a guy who has massively overshot his own ambitions. All he wanted to do was be the cheetah's physio. And he's gone on and achieved these amazing highs in the world of rugby. You could, at this stage, probably walk into almost any coaching job. Now, I know you announced the move to Leinster pre-World Cup already, but even then, you're pretty hot property. You've coached in Ireland before. I've mentioned earlier, but those who know know that Jock loves a little red wine. You could have gone to France. Let's just put this out there. They also make wine in Australia. What is it that made you return to Ireland? Um, yeah, the, the, probably the first thing is why why leave international rugby? And I, and and for me, I explained it the other day, and uh, and that then I'll go on to why why Leinster. So so international rugby, like this World Cup, I was I was away from home. When I got back, the, the, I, I sat this, uh, the Sunday after the trophy tour, I, 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 I lit the fire and we started prying and my son was sitting there, we we're having a beer. He said, you know that today is six months and one day that you've been away from, from Cape Town. And then, uh, and, and that's the thing of international rugby. Yes, it's only 13 test matches, but you are never at home. So I think in the, in, in, in the, since 2018, we've only played in Cape Town uh, a test match twice. Uh, one, is, one was England and the other one was Wales. I'm, and I'm excluding the British and Irish lines because we were in a bu bubble. But so, so the thing of international rugby, you're away for a long, long time. Uh, where, where in club rugby, you play more games. So it's not only 13, it's 38. But, but like I'm sitting at home now. Where If it was international, I was probably in a hotel somewhere, uh, either in South Africa or abroad. And, and, and uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, we were sitting as a family and, and, and the, um, the, 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 the kids actually said, you know, so whenever you, you, my, my daughter will say, come and, come and watch a netball game, please, Dad. Like if they are gone, sorry, man. I still need to do this analysis. So, so at the end of the day, you you start for success. You need time. The currency that we pay in, uh, as coaches are time, and and you only got twenty. I've only got twenty four hours in a day. So and I have to sleep and I have to maybe go for a jog and maybe have a glass of wine. So just to keep my own sanity. So where do you get the more time? You you take it from your family because they your bank. They and they give it to you because they love you. So. Uh, so that that is actually the chat we had as a family, and they just said, "Listen, it, it, we, we, the, and and, and I, I was literally thinking, I'm, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna lose them alive, you know, if I if I continue uh, with international rugby, and that's that's why it's not that I don't like international rugby, it's not that I don't like the Springboks, it's just listen, I I, I need to recharge." my family time and time with my family. And that, that's why I decided not to continue with international rugby, hence with the Springboks or any other team. And so 
but but I, what I do like about international rugby uh, is the challenge of the players because they are the best of the best, you know. And 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 for me, luckily, Stewart decided to move on to Racing, uh, who was with Leinster, and the Leinster job came up. And uh, for me, I think the nice challenge with Leinster is, uh, I mean, you basically sit with with the Irish international squad. So I think that the the demands of performance would be as high as the demand of performance will be uh, with an international job. Um, and the demands and the challenges that the players will, will put on to you as a coach uh, will be as high as an international team will put on, on any coach. So for me, it's probably worked out the best of the best, if I can put it like that. You still work with international quality players in an international environment, Almost uh, 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 within the Leinster environment, they they run a a very high performance uh, assist. As uh, I'm only here for a week, but they 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 run a high performance environment there, and uh, and I get some family time. So so yeah, that's the reason why I decided to to get out of international rugby, and that's why I I had this conversation with Rasi with Saru early on, and, and explained to them this is the reason and. Uh, uh, um, I was open and honest with with when 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 Leinster approached me, and uh, um, yeah, that that that's why I'm why I'm with Leinster and looking forward to working with him. Um, Jacques, yeah. it, it sounds like again you've come up with a strategy where where not only do all the ends uh, get served, but everybody wins. Yeah. <laughs> He's been Everybody thinking about was. it very deeply. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a very tip, a typically dark. Uh, <laughs> exactly. A serious amount of thought and strategy has gone into this. Uh, is there anything Always. you just do off the cuff, or is everything a big strategy game? Like I fear for you as a golfer. No, <laughs> no, no, everything, everything, uh, everything is wealth. I, I'm an overthinker. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm the, my wife. My wife reminds me a lot. Listen, sometimes you must just go with things, but no, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm a, I'm a complete uh, overthinker of things. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> well, uh, I think South Africa is very fortunate to have had an overthinker of your calibre uh, in that setup for as long as you were there. Um, and I think Leinster is in for some great new heights. So there's a there's a ton of close losses on their recent uh, <laughs> on their recent score sheet uh, history, uh, and so I'm sure they they'll be happy to have the guy who's renowned for the one point wins, three of them on the trot, uh, <laughs> in make or break games. Uh, to have you in the fold must be a massive reassurance for them. Yeah, I'm just starting out here. Like I said, it's going to be a, a nice challenge, um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, um, to and 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 the challenge will be. I think it's gonna. I know it's gonna take time uh, to get um, to get my my thought process and how I see things to get to get it embedded in the players and to get it second nature. It will take time. Um, uh, but uh, I, it, it's we the Leinster's a brainy bunch, so uh, I I hope they and I I believe they will cop on very quickly to it. Brilliant. Jacques, from my side, I mean, um, I, I think you've, you've made some incredible points. It's, it's fantastic to, I mean, I know this is through a screen. I look forward to catching up more now that you're uh, up in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. And if I could, if I could convey every single uh, well done and pat on the back that I've been told to give you, I'd knock over the TV screen because, because everybody <laughs> is, is, is so pumped up and, and, and well done for what you've done for the country. So a huge big thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being alone with you. It would be oh, lovely. Good man. Thank you, Jock. I know your time at home is precious, Thanks, and uh, and you have a family, no doubt, who is waiting. And uh, uh, Chewbacca, the dog, the the king of the household, <laughs> uh, demands attention. Uh, so we really appreciate your time, uh, and we look forward to seeing uh, the wild adventures you will no doubt still be going on, and the impact that you will have on players far and wide. Thanks, thanks, Elma. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a, it is a, it's my, it was a pleasure for me. If you want your fix of Paino Hask and Tins, then make sure you subscribe to The Lock In on Apple and Spotify podcast platforms. We've been The Good, The Bad and The Rugby brought to you by our friends at Continental Tires. Thank you so much to Bob Skinstad for joining us on this very special review pod. And the pod is brought to you by Continental Tires. It's produced by Folding Pocket Productions and the man in charge today, as usual, Tom Edwards.